Hey, hey, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out my site, watchcomplications.com. So those familiar with my channel know that there's a little bit of scientist in me and I like to test things out. And most of that has revolved around dials, but I also like creating, making, and doing other sorts of things. But this is a video that's about testing an idea that's fairly popular out on the internet. Now, the internet and Facebook groups and forums are, can be great places to find helpful tips and tricks, uh, but they can also be places to get uh, construed information, conflicting information, incorrect information. And so, you know, that little bit of science is like, okay, if someone says this is possible, this works for them, does it actually work? Well, the best way to know that is to test it out yourself. Observe the results, and there's your facts. I told some of my followers that I'm going to do some pocket watch stuff this year in 2021, and I've already started that with my most recent video on lever set versus pendant set. But what I have is a couple of projects going on. I'm going to use a couple of old uh, pocket watch movements to show sort of cleaning processes, uh, restoration tips, that kind of stuff. And what I want to do in this video is I've got the dials and I want to talk about how to go about cleaning those dials or one way in which people might suggest to clean an old enamel pocket watch dial. We're not talking about modern wristwatch dials. Even if there is a modern wristwatch that has enamel porcelain, the manufacturing process could be a little bit different, particularly with how the ink is either fired or printed or decaled, whatever. There's a lot of approaches to making dials. So I'm talking about old school enamel pocket watch dials. So let's say you have an old pocket watch, or maybe you're wanting to get into watch tinkering, and pocket watches are an excellent place to start for a variety of reasons. And so let's say you want to practice cleaning up the watch. How do you clean up the dial? You start searching around online. One of the things you're going to come across is using Polydent Denture Cleaner to help you clean those dials. Now you're going to find this recommendation in legit pocket watch forums, sites, uh, pamphlets, publications, that kind of thing. And people are going to have very different experiences, I expect, with it because there are a lot of variables at play. What's the temperature of the water? How long do you soak it? The the myriad of dial types and text and marker application that ex have existed over time. So there's a lot of variables. And so, yeah, so it might, what might work in one situation may not work in another. But I got a couple examples and I thought, why not give this an actual try? Now in this video, I'm just showing this polydent method of cleaning. I'm not gonna go through the process of where I would start and what I would do with a restoration project. This is just testing this one method. And so where would I? Let me, I wanted to get that out there up front. Dial cleaning is something to take slowly and practice at it. Practice dials, one, is get familiar with what you're working on first, if you are able to. But I would always start with warm water on, on any old dial. Just regular old warm water, a Q-tip, or some other sort of light cloth or very soft dial brush and see where you get. If it's not working for whatever it is you're trying to remove, maybe move up to a mild detergent or soap and water. And that will usually get you the results you're probably looking for, particularly on an older you know, pocket watch type of dial. It's possible you might kick up to a stronger detergent. I would never recommend going down, let's say, some sort of alcohol-based route uh, personally. Uh, you're, you're just going to remove varnish or lacquer and printing if it's on the surface in, in an instant, or like things like acetone. You know, don't go down that route. It, uh, it's not going to be um, helpful. You do get to these other types of cleaners like Polydent that become recommended for doing this sort of work. It can also be helpful to focus just on the parts of the dial you're wanting to clean, like the cracks specifically, instead of, let's say, soaking the entire dial in areas that don't necessarily need cleaned or exposed. So enamel dials are a layer that's fired on top of a metal blank. Porcelain is usually just a solid piece the whole way through. And you're going to see conflicting opinions if you're looking into this topic online on how wet you should get these metal backed dials. Do you submerge the thing the whole way? Certainly, no matter what you're doing, you want to use uh, the minimal amount to clean it and keep it dry, you know, 
fairly quickly afterwards. Now my opinion on that is I don't mind submersing an entire dial um, or getting them wet. It's just you got to get them cleaned up as quickly as possible. You don't want water sitting on a surface for any length of time, front or back of a dial. So that's my advice around that. So prediction, what do I think is going to happen? I think that the dials will generally look better after the polydent. I think that it will clean up the hairline cracks quite well and they'll sort of fade away. I think we do run the risk of maybe some of the printing coming off. I'm going to do an eight hour soak on these, an overnight soak, which is what you see a lot. Now, you could do it for less time. You could do it for 10, 15 minutes. You could do it for two or three hours. I'm going to go with what's the normal thing that people might be tempted to do with the dial. And that's let's let it soak overnight, just like the recipe for the dentures is on the back. And so that's the approach I'm going to use. So I think that we're going to find some of the printing might get a little bit lighter. The reason I say that is because a lot of old pocket watch dials were sort of mass produced uh, and for across companies. And what you end up having is the fired uh, text markers, the main portions of the dial are going to be fired, not printed on top or just lacquered over sort of thing. They're going to be stable throughout this process. But beyond that, you have things like logos, names, um, sub dial, sub marker text and tracks, depending on the complications on the watch that would have not been fired probably or uh, done a different way and that's where you really would run the risk with this so keep that in mind if you're going into a similar uh, restoration project an idea tinkering that etc that you got to consider how the dial was in originally manufactured and what the risks are going into it and, the and that's what i'm trying to say about my earlier process is there's always risk once you get into cleaning on a dial you're running risk and that's just time and experience getting uh, familiar with what to expect. The only way to really know what's going to happen is to have experienced it before or seen it happen. So that's why I recommend when you're getting to cleaning dials, start with the bare uh, minimum water and then slowly work your way up to get maybe where you want. Don't start and hit it hard from the very beginning. You might run the risk of making the dial worse in some ways. All right, enough said. First, I want to show taking the dials off of the watches, and then we'll get to cleaning them. In this video, I'm going to show the enamel dial cleaning process with two dials from pocket watches I have laying around. This one is really beat up. I used the hands from this watch for the bluing video. Check that out if you haven't for how to blue watch hands. So I'm going to take the dial off of this. I'm using it because it has lots of cracks in it and you'll see just how effective this method of cleaning is by using an old dial like this. Nothing particularly astounding about this old old pocket watch. Again, just, just because it's laying around. This other watch is in better condition. There's just two hairline cracks, at least ones that I've visually seen. Dial's dirty though. You can see one crack comes down here around one o'clock to center and then down toward six o'clock as well. It's quite dirty. This watch is a Georges Favreau Chocot, which was the founder of what we know as modern day Zenith. So it's a, you know, an interesting watch. This is one of those Grand Prix models. Thousands of these were made. So it's not like it's, you know, extremely valuable or anything like that. It's got a, an okay movement in it. These are pretty standard sizes that are in these pocket watches. Pop this open, show it to you real quick. It's a nice little movement. It's original. The hands on it look to be original. They're just beat up and have been repaired or something it looks like in the past. See it ticking away there because I moved it around a little bit. Rocking back and forth. They both need cleaned up like immensely. These were just bought off the street basically. So we're going to take these out of the cases, take the dials off, and I'm taking these apart anyway because I want to do some general cleanup, maintenance, restoration on this one. And this one is just a uh, yeah, for fun. The only thing really keeping this movement in the case is the stem. So I'm going to here give that a turn and pull out the stem. You can see this stem is quite big, very different, much larger than modern day, you know, movements. So there's that. And now, like I said, I don't think there's anything else really keeping this movement in here. 
It's just the stem. So that should pop out. That case is in terrible shape. Really just needs thrown out, to be honest. Good to have around for practice. Just like newer movements, there are typically two dial feet. You can see one of them sticking through the main plate right here. And the other one is gonna be 180 degrees across. It's a little bit more hidden by the, uh, the mainspring bridge here, but there's the other screw right there. So I'm gonna give these a little bit of a turn and should be able to pop the dial off just like that. Pretty straightforward. The other one must not have been set. While I'm here, might as well just show you how a lever set works. And it's very different than modern watches, obviously. But there's a little lever here, you can see, kind of moves back and forth. Quite uh, delicate when the dial's not on there. You can see how that moves back and forth, which engages and disengages the winding pinion. And that stem stays in all the way. You don't pull it in or out to do time setting. It stays in one location. And if you just wind it, then it's gonna wind the watch. If you push this lever up, then you can turn the stem and do the time setting. So that's called a lever set. So let's look at this dial. See that firing on the back? Not in great shape. Let's just redo it. I'm gonna, maybe I should use this blank and just re-enamel the thing. Actually, I have some other dials I might use. And if I can get this movement looking nice and, and everything, maybe put something different on it. But I just wanna illustrate the point here with the dial cleaning. So before, see all these cracks? The cracks actually aren't that big. They're, they're quite tiny. And if it's nice and clean, hard to see with the naked eye, just particularly from a distance. What makes those cracks look big is the fact that there's dirt and grime that has gotten down into the crack. So it sort of pronounces it. It amplifies what those cracks are. And once it's clean, those almost disappear, just the cleaning, because it removes the dirt and grime that's down in the cracks and they sort of just fade away, which is the cool thing about this. So that's the first dial we're gonna use. And now let's pull the other one out. If you haven't, watch my watch tools video. That looks like it'll be good. So I'm going to take that screw out, tweezers here, boom. What's interesting about this movement is the only thing that's blued on this thing, I don't know if it's at, from a service at some point since it's manufactured, but this, the click here has been blued. I'll take care of that. I'm gonna blue the screws on this maybe too. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, so we've got those screws out. Now this pocket watch is not lever set. See, it pulls in and out. So it's a little bit more contemporary. Okay, so now I flip this over and I'm going to remove the bezel. Pop this up. This is what's called a pendant set. So here's the crystal, it's really just feels like a piece of acrylic on this one. It's been replaced at some point. This is a unique process for pendant set pocket watches. So you remove those two screws, the case screws, and then you remove the bezel from the front of the watch. A little bit will tip out the front, and then you can slide it off of the stem. This needs to be out in the setting position though, so this needs to be pulled out all the way. And then you can kind of work this out. And this is gonna get cleaned, so I'm not particularly worried about my fingerprints, you might say. There we go, so just pop it out. Now you can see that stem right there, really, really dirty this case. It's not a bad case to be honest, it's okay. It'll look better once I clean this up. I'll do a video on that as well. Okay, so now that I've got the movement out of that one, I want to take the hands off of this, proper hand removal tool, put my finger down over it, these hands, have been repaired, it's been resoldered at some point. Really be good to have nicer hands than what's on it currently, anyway. And pop this small seconds off. Again, dealing with these old pocket watches, let me show you another trick. How does this dial come off? There's no 
dial screws accessible here on the back. It's because they're on the side of the movement. So this actually has a ring. You can kind of see it right here. This is a ring that goes around the outside of the movement and this whole thing will pop off. So there's a mark on where the dial feet screw is, or one of them, uh, on the movement. You can see it marked here. This is actually scratched or cracked down the side. But right there is where I'm gonna find the screw. Look at that. Now you can see the dial feet screws on the side. Again, 180 degrees from each other. Small screw. Give that a little bit of a turn and that'll pop right off. All right, so I'm zoomed out at a, at a wider angle here and hopefully it looks okay to kind of show you everything going on here. I've got just a basic clear cup. I'm keeping it clear so I can show you the dirt that's come off these dials after I've cleaned them. Here I've got just a basic brass wire that I've shaped into a design that works for my setup. This used to be one of those egg holders for like dyeing eggs. It worked really good for this, so there's a suggestion. So cleaning for this is pretty simple. We're going to put some warm water in the glass, drop the tab in, and then just lower the dial face down into the glass and let it soak for eight hours, give or take. So what I'll do is take the dial, and I've got this angled so it'll work for this particular dial. I'm going to angle that hook through the center hole. Get it up a little ways there and then bring the tip of it back through the small seconds at six. See, now that can sit flat, like so. And that'll sit right there and will be suspended nice and evenly inside of the cup. So I've got that. Let me go get some warm water in this and we'll drop the tablet in and then we'll clean the dial. So this is very warm water certainly don't want it boiling or something like that. I did take some before and after pictures of the dials so you can see what they look like before and then what they're going to look like after. Pop this down the water. You can see it starts foaming instantly. Then we're going to set the dial down inside and we'll leave it for, like I said, I'm going to do this one for about eight hours. Let me give you a side view. kind of see what's going on in here okay and you're gonna see you're gonna see at the bottom stuff has fallen off yuck yeah I got lots of stuff going on my bench got a Seiko SKX project I'm working on apparently people want to put GMT movements in Seiko cases and I'm gonna crack that particular nut my custom 3d printing look at that dirt already falling off of there so after this has had its bath, what you're going to do is just clean it off with some regular old lukewarm water and a really soft brush. And then we'll take a look at what these dials look like afterward. I'm going to do this one uh, for its uh, proper length of time, and then I'll do the second dial. And we'll look at them both together afterwards. Okay, so now we have the cleaned up dials. To the naked eye, they look 10 times better. They do look really good after going through that soak. If I had some more dials, I think I could test this further and do like a, a 30 minute soak, an hour, a three hour, just to kind of scale up a little bit. But I went with sort of the overnight idea just to test it out. Now here we have the one that was really busted up. You can see, and I'm going to put up pictures. So before and afters will really help show this off. It shows in the video here really well. The only lines that are still sort of prominent are ones that are coming off from where the smashes and chips are on this dial. So there were some cracks. You can faintly see them coming down from 12 and across here. A lot of them have faded quite well. Again, these ones that are coming off from where these were chipped is a little bit more pronounced still. You could go through the cleaning process again and maybe specifically target these cracks with, again, some sort of a detergent, Q-tip, that kind of thing. The blank itself cleaned up nicely. You can see the metal really shining through now. But one thing you'll see, and it's gonna be best to show this with the pictures, is that the main numerals and this outer track, everything looks fine, looks normal. None of the printing has been removed. 
That's not the same with the subdial track and numerals. They have faded a bit and a few little pieces of the printing have gone off. Now, again, I don't know what the process was for this specific dial, but it's possible that this was printed on afterwards, that this part was fired and this wasn't. It could be that just because it's a little bit of a lighter, uh, thinner lines, that's why they're having the issue. Or it could be, as something I've seen before, is you might have an old dial like this, someone wants to sell it, maybe they printed or painted a little bit to cover up the spots that were missing, and that's what, what we're seeing uh, the truth of now. So those are all possibilities. But be aware that, at least in this case, for that long soak, this subdial did have some issues. Now let's look at our Georges Favreau Chocot. So this is a French style carriage dial and again that same thing I mentioned. I'm guessing that the main numerals and track were fired again sort of for larger manufacturing and then for example you might have different brands putting their names or logos on it so they're printed after the firing and that is probably what we've got going on here. Same issue with the sub dial. It's not as prominent. Those lines have been thin, the numerals, uh, little pieces perhaps missing a little bit, and the name has faded just a smidge. So that's the risk you run. The big question is, does the polydent work? It, yeah, if you want to get rid of cracks, it's going to work at that dirt and grime in the cracks. It will fall to the bottom with that action, particularly if you put it on something that shakes a little bit. I would not recommend ultrasonic cleaners, particularly heavy-duty ones for, for working with these sort of dials. Again, that's something you'll read about online, and some people will say, that's how I clean them. I, I just would be... It's too much shaking. There's cracks in these dials. It's a risk. Again, it's one of those cleaning methods that maybe it'll work in some situations, but... In other circumstances, it's going to potentially ruin the dial, remove plating, uh, chips falling out of the dials, etc. So you got to be careful uh, regardless. But getting back to the polydent, did it clean up the cracks? Yeah. So you can see in the right light, there's that faint crack coming down here from about 1 o'clock to the center, and then it would continue on down here through the sub-seconds dial. But to the naked eye and in most light you can't even see it it's kind of vanished it's cleaned it up really nicely again you could have specifically targeted those lines and cleaned those up the sub seconds i had a lot of grime on it um, it almost looked like there was an interior circle here that's just from something on the seconds hand and it just running in that <laughs> track or something i don't know but that was just dirt and that's been washed and cleaned away so you know it's done fairly okay but we've again, you're running that risk of removing certain parts of the printing if you go that route. Could it have been less with a shorter soak? Um, maybe, probably, um, though I'm not 100% sure without testing that. Maybe I'll try it again in a future video. But with the restoration projects I have coming up, specifically my stopwatch, I'm starting with water. See where we get with that. Then maybe a mild detergent. And that's as far as I usually like to go. But I'll specifically target lines with, like I said, a detergent. Um, and a little bit of warm water, and that might get me as far as I need to with most dials. Well, there you go. Them's the facts. You've been warned. As always, when you get to doing things like dial cleaning, just use precaution. Start with the bare minimum and work your way up. Don't always jump right in with something that you see as generally common advice on the internet. It can work, but it may not work. Proceed with caution, friends. Thanks for joining me on the video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, check out more of my content on watchcomplications.com. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. For now, I am out.